Everest Challenge is a real Cinderella story. It's not only a story about uh, an able-bodied climber that got cut down in the prime of his life and uh, then held on to uh, a dream for 20 years and finally climbed the highest mountain in the world. Uh, it's also a story about uh, losing um, our, our funding just moments before we were going to go on the expedition. Tom, this is try number three for you. Yes. First of all, how are you feeling going into this? Are you confident this time you're actually going to make it to the summit? Yes, I, I really, it, it, climbing Mount Everest is such a big production. It takes so much of your time to climb the fiscal mountain, to get there in the first place, uh, organize people and get over. If I didn't think I was going to do it, I, I just wouldn't waste my time or theirs. I think lots of people think that climbing Mount Everest is just a question of you know coming to the mountain and doing a gladiatorial contest against an inert object and uh, you just go to Everest, you climb it and you either get up it, get killed or go home. And um, if you're unlucky you have to snip off some black bits and uh, um, you know live the, le the rest of your life sand some toes but realistically um, an Everest expedition is an incredibly complex thing and um, it's probably the closest thing to uh, organizing a military uh, a, a tactic or something like that that you can have. And um, plans are great because they endure till the first minute that you engage the mountain and then everything's out the window and you basically have to live from minute to minute, day to day, and you're con continually uh, reassessing uh, what you have to do based on uh, the weather conditions, uh, human condition, uh, the logistics of what you're trying to do on the mountain, uh, and so on. So there, there are tons of variables, and they're always working uh, sometimes in harmony, but most often against one another. And, uh, and so you have a lot of balls in the air at the same time and I, I, it's, it's not like juggling balls, it's like juggling a refrigerator, a chainsaw and a bunch of other things. In, in 1989 I survived the storm that killed six people on the mountain and uh, it didn't dampen my ardour to go back again. When you're up there, it doesn't matter who you are, and recent events testify to that, um, you know, you're, you're out on a limb and you're really at the cutting edge of things and if anything goes wrong, you're in trouble. Every time you come here, the mountain is swept clean by savage avalanches and huge rockfall and terrible storms. And you have to start again. Mount Everest just happens to be the height that is around about the maximum altitude that our human physiology can deal with. And that makes it a formidable task. When you're in the Western Coombe uh, and you're in the sunshine and there is nothing to stop the heat from coming down. There's no dust in the atmosphere. There's very little water vapor up at 21,000 feet. Uh, temperatures can get up to 110, 115 degrees in the sun. And then as soon as the sun goes down, the temperatures fall through the floor and that night can be minus 50 degrees. And uh, so equipping yourself for those kind of temperatures is very difficult. <laughs> People don't realize how difficult it is to get the calories inside you when you're doing something like climbing one of the world's major mountains. Above um, 15, 18,000 feet, you just have no appetite at all. Your body physiologically is dying, and to get uh, the calories inside you is excruciating. Uh, in the old days, people used to take uh, champagne and uh, uh, just beautiful snacks, uh, caviar and all kinds of stuff like that because pe they knew that people didn't have an appetite so they tried to give them the, the best delicacies but uh, they also found that the delicacies don't have the nutrition you need and we tried a different approach.
we've had kind of a difficult morning. Tom's uh, definitely uh, not feeling good. He feels like he's got what he's had before up here and uh, he knows that he needs to go down to get better. I came to climb, you know, this mountain with him, you know, he's a buddy. It made me feel like not climbing without him. And uh, it would be easier if Angela and I go and climb this thing, it'd be a lot easier with, with uh, two people up there rather than five and then three people next time rather than five and uh, but the fact of the matter is, you know, it's uh, we'd go without him. It's just really sad. I think that he has to go downhill, and, but he's sick, and, and it's just, you know, it's just been such a long time coming, and uh, so much work, you know. It is incredible. It's just incredible. It's just so much work, physical, mental, you know, and just getting the right equipment, the money, the the team. The right team in the right place at the right time, you know. So it's here it is, and uh, May the fourteenth, whatever. Uh, it's reality. Two weeks before the monsoons come. Tom, I hate to say it, but I don't think. Uh, I think you're going to need more than one day of resting the two. I mean, it's my personal pain. I just came up here. Uh, basically, I felt like I was reacclimatizing. Uh, I think the way you've been feeling and being down, you're, you know, I think it's going to take more than one day. So maybe plan on the 22nd. Jeff, I think if I go down, I get this thing. If I get strong, I have just a prayer of a chance of uh, doing something this season but um, if I just uh, why, just kick my heels in base camp this is day four I haven't seen any improvement I've got to do something now but uh, right now I'm feeble <laughs>